and welcome to a very special episode of the Hollywood Critics Association Longbox, where we connect your favorite movies and television shows to the comic books. Mm -hmm. I'm Tessa Smith, aka Mama's Geeky. You can find me at mamasgeeky.com, Mama's Geeky on all social media, including here on YouTube. And I am joined by my very lovely co-host. I'm Jonita Davis, Jonita L. Davis on all platforms. Um, you can find me at The Black Cape um, and at Mama's Geeky as well. Um, so today is fun. Um, yeah, tell them who think, we got. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I want to say, I think I'm on my phone right now, and I think my my tech went because, it, you know, of who we have. I don't have the grid. I don't have the grid. Oh, so no. we're, let's, let's get ready to bring in the guy who does, um, Mr. Javon Wade, who yes. plays Cyborg, Doom Patrol. In Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol. Oh Which you guys God. have heard us talk about Doom Patrol so much mm -hmm. already. We're loving this season. We're coming up on the season finale this week. So, yeah, let's talk mm -hmm. to him. Let's talk all things Doom Patrol and Cyborg. All things. Yeah, I think a few things will surprise you guys when we start talking about the comics, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm so excited that you're joining us today. <laughs> Wicked. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Oh, I tell you, yeah. I love the show. Joe and I have talked so many times about how this is one of the shows that, like, you never know what to expect with it, which is what I yep. love about it. Yep. It just gets crazier and crazier. Yep. And then it's, like, even gets crazier. And you're like, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It was, no, I was going to say, it's nuts. It's, it, even for us in the, in the process, you know, we get just as surprised as you guys do. Like we get the scripts, you know, episode by episode. We don't know what's going to happen next until, you know, we get to see and read the script. So we go on that journey in the same way the audience does. It's, it is, it's phenomenal. It's just great to be a part of. It's so, I just love how they push the envelope over and over and over. And it's so fun. And it's one of the few that knows how to do an ensemble cast. I feel like, like, I feel like everyone gets their time, which yeah. with that many people, it can be hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that. I feel like Doom Patrol is like, okay, like we're going to give this person a story today. We'll do this. We'll do that. And they just do it so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and that leads to the last episode, actually, which mm -hmm. was Cyborg's. Uh, it was really, really heavy on Cyborg's journey. I I really, um, I, I'm wondering, um, and you don't have to answer this, but I'm wondering if the whole removing his uh, armor and all of the the grid and everything is that a hallucination is it a hallucination yes can you answer that or no oh oh, oh it's real or part of the the it's, data it's, oh it's real okay it's, i was wondering if it was the data sisterhood i was kind of hoping because it's like no he doesn't need to lose all of his stuff you know um you guys don't need to see my dirty room um <laughs> okay yeah yeah um, no, it, yeah <laughs> It's yeah. for sure. It's for sure happening. It's um yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the arc that Vic's been going on. You know, um, mm -hmm. and I think the first kind of trigger was from episode five when he's with the sisterhood of Dada and is first challenged um, when he's asked, you know, who are you? Why are you? And he's there left confronting himself, and he's left with the question of who who actually are you? And for the first time, he's asked that question. Which from that point, he really kind of goes on that journey to self-discovery in the hallucination of, you know, going to see his mother in the mm -hmm. afterlife and asking mm -hmm. those questions. And if for the first time ever, he's challenged to actually realizing that, hold on a minute, I, I could have been normal. And if I was, what, what would that have looked like? And he can't bear the knowing and the, mm -hmm. the opportunity to see what that would be like. And so, yeah, when he's given the opportunity to see and feel what that would be, it, it happens and it's real. It's very real. Yeah. It's so crazy. Like when yeah. he shows back up and they're just like, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I go the and I'm trying to think of yeah. what's happened or not. But I love how they're just like, we don't know what to do with you now. I'm like, yeah. poor cyborg. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Literally. So what was it like? What was it like acting without all the, the prosthetics for the uh, first time? It was very different. Um, you know, <laughs> when you've gone especially three years of acting with mm -hmm. the prosthetics, like uh i can't actually see out of the 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 eye in which the mask is over so i'm acting oh. with one eye all the time oh so it was gosh. great it was great to be able to see with two eyes and um it's weird because it kind of alters your depth perception right where you kind mm -hmm. of uh you, you having two eyes allows you to see when someone throws you a tennis ball when you have one eye covered it feels a lot closer than it actually is or a lot further away than it actually is so okay. you know the first kind of couple of weeks bumping into stuff, but now it, you know, I became a bit of a veteran at it, but 
not having that and then naturally the actual weight of the suit and you know the actual prosthetics of the glue in my hair my face and having this on it, it felt very different um and was yeah a great opportunity to kind of to have that released and and um and yeah, see what it felt like acting and being with the gang as Vic and, and without all the prosthetics. Yeah, it's cool. That's so yeah. cool. And I love the part where he goes to like do his canon and they're like, uh, what are you doing? It's it's muscle memory. Even you know, the the scene when um, he first comes off of the bed, he mm -hmm. he goes to touch his face and he realizes his his cybernetics are not there because it's so you've lived with something your whole life pretty much you know it's 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 a, a huge change uh you know I, I broke my arm when i was a kid and had the cast on for so long that I even remember trying to touch my arm and oh crap it's gone you know and mm -hmm. vic having all of that cybernetic and then being in a position where it's all gone there's a lot of getting used to yeah what did you think yeah. when you first read that script and you saw like oh he's he's removing it all like what did you what was your reaction, I guess, when you read that? The first thing was, uh, I couldn't believe it. I thought that, you know, like what you just said, um, Janita, like, is this some kind of uh, dream? Is it some kind of, you know, like, okay, if it's if he's not cyborg, then what what am I doing? Who Who is he? And I think that those, those are some of the things in which are so brilliant about our show and our writer's room where we really get to explore things that haven't been explored before. You haven't seen this in, in live action and you haven't seen, you know, Vic, being who he is and um and the first time was like wow okay are we gonna do this and i we get briefed at the beginning of the season as to what the arc is going to be and the kind of general flow but we have no idea on the specifics so when i'm getting told vic is going to go on a journey challenging himself as to who he really is um and and what it means to be black and what it means to be cyborg the last thing i'm expecting is that he's actually going to rid of his cybernetics i didn't even know it would be possible you know right um, and so it was wild. Yeah, I'm, I'm still yeah, yeah. now, and I'm still kind of waiting to see where this whole thing is going to go. Yeah, I, I, I think that the audience too is uh, moving to where you can get light, where you guys can see me. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, I think the audience is, 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 you know, I think they appreciate kind of see him stripped down. He's, it seems more like he's stripped down. He's raw. He's himself. Especially after the, the episode with his mom, the, the emotions, and now he's physically stripped down. So, what are they going to do? I mean, well, you don't have to, you probably can answer it, but I'm willing to be like, why? You've got him raw. You've got him just literally naked almost. Um, what, is, what, is, what is the end game for Cyborg um, in, this, in this season? Can you give us a hint? Maybe? Yeah. Um, I, you know, in, in terms of the end of the season, I think we're going to, he's definitely, he's just come into him, right? In, into himself. Mm -hmm. um, and, like the, the great thing is about even being an actor on this show is that I'm in I'm in the audience's seat just as much as you are in terms of I have no idea where we're gonna go with it. And I won't know until we start getting the first few episodes of the of um, the next season. But mm -hmm. um I do know that, you know, he, he is now understanding and coming to terms with the decision that he's made and he's exploring what it actually means. We see when he tries to get out his cannon. Um and he's coming to terms with, you know, what what he's actually done. Um, but at the same time, he's he's thrilled about being able to live in his own skin and be himself. We we touched on this even in season one when, you know, he goes on the dating app and he goes on cash and he tries to find a date. And he's just so upset with himself that he can't be normal. And now he's going to get to explore these things. And um, I've tried to do a really, um, a really strong job at having Vic at the forefront always, right, in terms of who who Cyborg is, and, and there have been iterations of the character, but for me, what, what really fascinates me is that we know that he's a Cyborg, we can see that face value, but bringing forward the human side of him and being connecting with us as an audience. I loved Teen Titans when I was a kid, that's what I really connected to, right? Mm -hmm. And um, seeing the, the, the Cyborg in Cartoon Network in the UK, I loved him because he was just like one of my friends, he was just like one of us, and I could see the human side of him, and I've tried to really kind of push that forward. So now that he's lost his cybernetics, there, there isn't, other than, you know, what you see visually, I, I, I'm hoping that there, there isn't a world of a difference because I've tried to be at the forefront of maintaining Vic before Cyborg and allowing mm -hmm. him to keep and, and hone in on his humanistic um, features and, and elements, both, both physically and mentally and emotionally. Yeah, I, I think, think you're doing a great job that. of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It does feel like it's like he's 
physically different, but that's it. You know, he's mm-hmm. still the same guy. And hopefully eventually the team will <laughs> realize that and he'll be able to bring, I'm sure he'll find things he can bring to the table. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one thing I loved about this season is it feels like, and having seen the finale already, and this is going to air before that. So I'm going to be very careful with my words, but it feels like this episode is a whole lot of like uh, redemption, right? Second chances is a lot of that. And I feel like, you know, Vic gets his second chance of he gets to be, himself right this is what he wanted when he found out i mean in that episode when he found out wait I, there was a other option i mm-hmm. loved that episode because it just felt like i don't know you did such a good job of uh, i'm trying to think of the best way to describe this but like you could tell in his head he was like mad like so angry but still like battling with is that something he'd want to do is it not like would he still be the same i just love that i think you played him so well uh, you Thank do you every season but this season particularly it like really felt the connection with him and just his struggle and i love that this season feels like for everybody second chances everyone's kind of getting there yeah I, and i i also feel even just alluding to the finale like one thing is that that vic doesn't that he doesn't lose is his heart you know like as much as he loses his ability to be able to physically be the superhero. The superhero to Vic is much more than just what he can do physically. It's his heart. It's his, it's his will to help. And I love that about him. And, you know, that, that shines through in, in, in our finale. And, and, and it's, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to, um, yeah, you know, experience the superheroism in a different way, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it just, in, in terms of what you were saying about, um, you know, his connection and, and his battle between having, you know, a choice of realizing there was another option. Vic just want, he just wanted the opportunity, you know, like when someone comes to you and they say, look, you can have, um, you can have a PB and J sandwich and that's it, but you didn't get the option to have a, a, a ham sandwich. Sometimes, mm-hmm. even though you were still going to pick the PB and J, you just want the option. <laughs> and that's what mm-hmm. he's struggling with, with his father. The fact that you didn't even give me the option. There was another way this whole time I felt like, and I thought that, there wasn't another way. And you're telling me that I could have looked normal and still been, and you still did this to me. And and it just kind of really brings a crescendo to this relationship, this battle that we've seen between Vic and Silas since season one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Vic and Silas thing just kills me too. Um, the, the relationship when, when Silas was the cowboy, the imaginary friend, I'm like, Oh, we've got some <laughs> serious daddy issues here. This is, it goes deeper than any of us knew. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love that they're bringing out the father. I love you. said so you mentioned that because the father son relationship has been so rich in this, um, in, in this uh, show. And I think it kind of mirrors the cyborg, um, um, arcs in in the comics, not the Doom Patrol comics, but the the Teen Titans, oh, yeah. the the mm-hmm. the Titans comics. Um, because he has this complex relationship with the um the idea of his father and his father, you know, the actual guy. So um, I'm glad they brought that over. You know, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that that that's that's a lot of you know the materials that I was able to draw from because naturally you're looking at the Doom Patrol and there is no cyborg, and so. No. But the materials that I drew from were Teen Titans, were Cyborg, mm-hmm. were Cyborg Rebirth, 52, you know, and, and taking all of those materials as well as what I've seen visually um, in in any other live action or cartoon animation uh, iteration of the character to be able to draw from. And, and it's great to be able to have a show which still feels so ensemble, still kind of, you know, pushes Vic into that world. But at the same time, you can still see a very clear arc and a very clear through line for what we see with Vic in the comics and what we see with Cyborg. So it's a bit of uh, best of both worlds, which is great. Yeah. And I, I think I need to repeat that. Cause I think a lot of people who don't read the Doom Patrol comics, they don't know that there's no Cyborg in the Doom Patrol yeah. in the comics. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a uh, Dr. Brown, I think his name is, um, yeah. but, um, but no Cyborg. So, and, and when I saw them put Cyborg in the Doom Patrol, I'm like, okay, let's not, do a little bit of tokenism here, just throwing in a random black guy. But um, <laughs> but like you said, your story's so rich, and you it feels like it feels like you belong. So I mean, it even gets me thinking. Okay, he's a part of the Doom Patrol, and I have to remember, no, he's not. In, in the comics, you know, this is a totally for the TV show. So I really love that you're you're kind of rewriting canon here. How's that feel? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's 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 new, it's fresh. 
and it's brave as well. You know, mm-hmm. uh, my hat goes off to the Room Patrol, our writers' uh, room, who do such a great job at um, just being so brave. And we've seen, you know, from just the world of the show, how brave and wacky and wonderful it is, and still mm-hmm. being able to get that heart and that relatability with all of that madness. And at the same time, it being a superhero show and feeling like a superhero show, but at the same time, it feeling like just this character driven world. Um, mm-hmm. And they they didn't they didn't you know um, shy away from these themes. And when I even yeah. heard what we was going to be tackling with you know even the the race issue and 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 um, Vic and what it means to be black and you know Vic seeing his past and trying to get a black superhero toy and that kind of you know ascending to what like all of that stuff are things that would be you know um, frowned upon or things that oh well, we can't touch that. But we, mm-hmm. we go right in and we've really been unapologetic with it, which. Um, as a creative, I just, I fall in love with. So yeah, it's a dream being on this show and, and just being a part of this world. And um, yeah, I'm so glad that you guys enjoy it just as much as we enjoy creating it. Yeah. It's so I love it. fun. I love like yeah. I love the show. It's one that it's funny because it, in all honesty, and I've admitted this before, I didn't watch season one until season two was coming out and people were like, no, 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 you have to watch this show. And I was like, really? Like, it looks so weird. They're like, no, 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 dive in. And then so I started season one like a week before season two was coming out. And I was like so excited that I didn't have to wait for season two. I was like, yes, <laughs> it was so good. Like, how did I miss out on this show? You know? Yeah. And now yeah. I've revisited it a few times and told people, like, no, 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 you guys have to watch this. Wait yeah. to see some of this stuff. Like amazing. It's crazy, but it's yeah. so good. Like we talk, we mentioned the sex ghosts all the time. We're like, how did that happen? Like they're just hanging out at the mansion. That that's like yeah. that's half that's like half the shit that happens is like yo how like where where did you guys even think of this? How did you guys even think of this? How like the, the most and the where butts? Things, like, yeah, where butts? Like, where it's got to the point okay. where it's literally like anything can happen, you know, and and that's the joys of it. And you know, even when we get to team up with Willoughby Kipling and and fight butts and like when we saw that episode, I was like, what? And it's like, but yeah, but and zombies, the zombie episode. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love the zombie episode because it was like, it was so far away from anything we've ever done. And also it was an opportunity for us to be our characters, but also play other characters, you know, and um, be these zombies. And yeah, it's, it's, it's wacky. It's wonderful. It's, it's the Doom Patrol, man. I know. Yeah. I was like, of course there's zombies. Like this makes perfect sense because it's Doom Patrol. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why not? not? It was yeah. so great. I, so I love it. what would you like to see coming up in future seasons of the Doom Patrol? What Are there I'd any like villains or anybody you want to work with? Yeah, go ahead. Um what I'd like to see is um I would I would so I'm in a, in a rug and a hard place because I love the the character driven stories that we get and the development, mm-hmm. um, but I can't help but look at the uh, the Doom Patrol, um, you know, post our current Doom Patrol and and the old um, Doom Patrol and see them as a superhero team and mm-hmm. and really you know banding together and finding ways that we can actually explore that world where you know fast forward to when. Those, those powers have been developed uh, by all of the characters and they are actually able to go on missions and be the the, the, the band of misfits to actually, you know, um, go out and fight evil and, and, and evil presents itself and these big bads that we get in these different episodes are, are a blast um, and we find our way through. And, and, you know, the fact that we always come back around is us defeating whatever those odds are, but usually through some kind of, heart and you know and character driven <laughs> opportunity but i'd love to just to kick some ass as a team you know and like yes. those moments like when we're all in the heart and we're all fighting the butts in the barn with willoughby um, <laughs> like that those, those moments gave me moments of like ah oh, even as we're doing it more of this more of this you know um, <laughs> so yeah i just i i'd love to find that that balance and, and see that world um but at the same time it's a hard place because i just love the character driven elements that we get and even selfishly as an actor it, it that's what drives me and what makes me love being a part of this show to be able to play a superhero but we're diving into real is- issues and it's really really character driven and about so much more than just being a superhero mm-hmm. yeah well, speaking of that like go back to when you first got told you got this role how did that feel like you're gonna mm-hmm. be a superhero that's cool <laughs> Yeah, it was it was incredible. It was um it was a dream to be honest. It was I had always wanted to play a superhero. 
um, after I did the purge, I uh, messaged my agents and said, look, like I did this stunt scene, right? And in, in the purge and um, my director was like, man, you, you a superhero, man. You gonna play, you gonna play a black superhero, bro. And I literally yeah. went home and, and I tried to manifest that. I sent an email to my agent, to my management team and said, look, the director Gerard said, I'm gonna be a superhero. So whatever's out there going right now, like keep your ears to the streets because I wanna play a superhero um, and literally, you know, that, that same project that uh, The Purge came out and that's where I was spotted by Greg Bellanti who cast me as Cyborg. So yeah, it was a real kind of um, full circle of manifestation, which was amazing. And yeah, it's I'm living every day a dream. Um, yeah, it, it was. I it love was. that you manifested it. I love that it was a manifested dream come true. I love that. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And coming from the purge, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Doom Patrol, right? Um, <laughs> that, that's so appropriate for the show. I mean, coming from the purge and all that madness to you know the manor. I mean, it it seems fitting. It seems fitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Sure. No, thank you. Thank you. So, so what's I, it like? Oh, oh, you go ahead, Joe. No, I was just gonna say, what's it like working with um that group um the, the yeah. actors first of all you've got so much talent in in the room um what's it like working underneath um all of those people and some of them you know pretty seasoned actors in there yeah it's um it's it's amazing first of all it's a real family like everyone like the chemistry that you see on screen is exactly how it is like in real life um with us as actors um, and that being on a show, uh, I couldn't imagine it being any other way, um, spending so much time with these people that you, you grow to love so much and, and that family. And, and, you know, as an actor, you know, that you're constantly performing, you're constantly imagining, but we can't deny that the, the realism and you take a part of yourself to every character. So that part of ourself that loves each other as castmates comes through when we see these, these band of misfits come together, um, and then just being able to work with, um, you know, just these veterans um, like Timothy Dalton, you know, uh, mm -hmm. who was James, Bo like James Bond, like, come on, like it, this, this yeah. stuff is like, yep. the man's been doing this for so long and you're, you're on set and you're seeing him do certain things and you're like, wow, this is um, uh, a new, a new thing, a new string to my bow, something I can add to my arsenal, something I didn't see, you know, happening. Um, and then Alan Tudyk and even this season mm -hmm. with Michelle Gomez. And mm -hmm. these are all seasoned veterans that we get to work with and you learn so much from and um, you gain so much experience that makes you a better actor, that makes you a better performer. And I've learned things throughout the seasons that even has helped me grow even within the show as an actor. Um, and so it's phenomenal. And then on top of that, you know, being with, you know, Diane, with April, with Matt, Matt Zuck, with Riley, with Matt Bomer, uh, with Brendan Fraser, you know, like even like Brendan, like I'm watching with the mummy, uh, you know, Georgia, all these movies that I'm like, when I'm just a kid watching these <laughs> things, no idea one day I'm going to be working alongside this guy. Um, so yeah, it's, it's amazing, man. It's, um, it's a real dream and everything that I get from this show, I'm so grateful for because I feel like it's, um, I, I am now getting equipped for any other work that I do in the future. And we get to do so much and learn so much from the character development to the stunts, to the wacky world, to the amount to how big the set is and all of these things that I'm getting uh, really equipped to deal with anything in the future and help my performances and, and as I build as an actor. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. That's, that's, that's exactly be amazing. what yeah. I was going to ask Joe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask just about like Brendan coming in because he's not there a lot, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. because it, his, he does like voiceover stuff, right? For Robot mm -hmm. Man. So, uh, but he feels like he was in in this season a little bit more than usual. So I was going to ask about getting to actually work with him more in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, it's amazing every time we get to 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 link up in person. Um, like the only time that that we get to work together is literally when you guys see us on screen together or in an episode that he's in as as Brendan. Um, and so yeah, it's very rare and. Um, and so when we do get those moments, even with Matt as well, with Matt Bomer, um, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're very rare moments. And so we do cherish them. And it's amazing. Like episode eight was a dream to have everyone. It's the first time we've had everyone together on set at the same time, you know, um, and everyone together in sharing one scene. Like we have days where, you know, Matt's in and he's doing a scene or Brendan's in, he's doing a scene and we're passing or whatever it is, or, 
you know, um, uh, he's just finished off something. So I'll see him and we'll spend a couple of hours just being able to jam. But um, very like that was the only time episode eight, I believe, yeah, that we've actually ever been in a scene together with all of us. And so it was magical. We're all sitting in that tent and we're like looking yeah. at each other like, yo, isn't this crazy? Like, isn't this beautiful? And we're looking at the director, looking at the producers like, yo, more of this, please. <laughs> um, so, yes um, please yeah, I'll, I'll take it, it. <laughs> it's amazing um to work with these guys and yeah when Brendan comes to set he just brings just he is the man you know what I mean he's just so funny um and yeah just lights everything up and but I do have to give a huge shout out to um to Riley and Matt Zuck who um are in these suits and playing these characters on an everyday um who bring these characters to life and it gets on it's like an illusion that people believe that you know uh when they're performing that it's uh they're just kind of doing the actions or whatever. No, like they're actually in this as if, if we took those tapes, um, mm -hmm. what, what we recorded on the day, like that would, that could still be the show, you know, because they're putting their all into everything. We're in these scenes and, and they're giving a, a real strong guide, even for Matt and for um, Brendan. And so, um, yeah, like those guys do a ph phenomenal job uh, and their physical acting is phenomenal because you can't even see them and they convey such emotion and such, you know, so yeah, man, it's a band of, a band of uh, brothers and sisters together trying to create something magical. I love it. Because I was going to ask, do they they must do the lines when you're filming, right? Even though they're in oh, the yeah, scene. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not just the lines. It's not just like a line read. Like, it's yeah. like, because we need to get from them what, we, what we're going to get or what you're going to see or hear from um, Brendan and Matt on the day to the point where it's got to be 100 as if this is going out. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, okay, so I have one burning question that's away from this conversation. It's actually kind of silly, but you know, it's Doom Patrol. Okay, so when y'all were, this is a scene y'all were playing kind of ping pong with, um, I don't know, a babe, uh, the baby. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> where, what were you hitting actually in real life? I, I mean, I know it wasn't, um, it wasn't her. Um, it wasn't Laura, baby. It was an allure thing. I don't even know what to call it. But what were you hitting in real life? Were you, were you hitting like a ball or it looked like there was a little ping pong game starting. <laughs> oh, right yeah, no, well, uh, hitting, hitting oxygen. Oh, air. Oh, oh my really? gosh. Okay. Yeah, there's no, so we, we'll get told, you know, what, what's happening. Okay. So yeah, Madame Rouge is coming around and the swing's coming. She's going to come around the bed and three, two, one, she's there. You know, and then when it's on the table, what? all right, cool. And we're just, we're hitting, we're just, hitting, just imagining that she's there. Um, so everything, if you was to see the footage before you get to see what's imparted, it's just, it's just us, me and April, literally just hitting nothing. <laughs> that's, hey, I, I, that's, that is impressive because I thought, you know, they have to be connecting with a ball or something because these swings look so, so real, you know, they don't look mm -hmm. like you're just swatting the air randomly, but yeah, I, I mean, the, the, that, that, Speaks to you, speaks to your skill, I guess. Yeah, it Thank does. That, it was a really good scene. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank you fun. so much. I was yeah. like, what is happening here? I like how Joe, you're like, you're obviously not hitting a Laura baby. Yeah, they clear yeah. <laughs> that would have been something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so um I we well we our time's almost up. Um I do wanna want to know what your favorite scene or your episode or maybe even season was um for doom for um, um yeah my, for the show. My, my favorite uh oof. I, I couldn't give you an, an overall it'd be too difficult um season season three has been my favorite season um uh for sure um it's just i feel like the seasons have just got better and better as they've gone on uh, my oh. favorite episode within this season would be episode um four five and eight um and in previous seasons, season one, I would say my favorite episodes, episodes two and five, my entrance. And then I loved episode five also. And um, and season two, I just loved the journey with me and Ronnie and my my whole arc with Karen <laughs> Oberlin, um was just, yeah, it was just amazing. So, yeah, that's what I kind of say. But, yeah, it's so difficult to, to you know, sum it up. They all have something special to them. They do. They do. It's yeah. so great. I love the show. I mean, I think it's so fun. Like I said, I totally came into it late. I was like, what have I been missing? I can't believe I totally missed out on the show. Yeah. I okay. love it. I can't. I know. Yeah. Right. You're right. I just I thought it was so fun. And then and then like we talked about it before, but the zombie episode was like one of my all-time favorites because I was I love zombies. So I'm like, whenever you can bring zombies into something, and yeah. I just love that I was like, of course they turned into zombies because they died. This makes 
perfect sense that they're that's now it. zombies. That's it. Yeah, no, it was a bunch of fun. It was a bunch of fun. But thank that's you guys. It. I appreciate mm-hmm. you guys tuning in, watching, and your love. I feel it through the screen. Um, so I really appreciate it and taking your time to to, to chat with me today. So um, yeah, you're amazing. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you for taking the yeah. time. Seriously, we're excited. I can't wait for everyone to see this interview. And of course, the finale, mm-hmm. yes. which uh, I've watched a couple times already. And I'm like, it's sad, though. It's always sad when a season comes to an end, isn't it? Like, it, it, is. Is. it, it is. is. It is. But it's coming back. So Exactly. Exactly. You know? so, Good news. That's great, great, great news. That's great news. Yeah. yeah. Excited yeah, so. for more crazy Doom Patrol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank awesome. you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Anytime. Mm-hmm. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Thank mm-hmm. ah. Let's see. That was awesome. That was awesome. I cannot believe I, I'm like here holding my phone during this whole thing. I, oh my god, your arms have got to be killing you. No, it no, 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 no. I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, now, well, not the that I'm resting against the wall. Um, yeah. anyway, um, but yeah, yeah, guys out there, my phone, my my computer is. My computers, both of my laptops are dead. And like, yeah, technical difficulties always, always happening. Always. Oh, I know. Yeah, when we prepare. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> All right. Do you want to was- record our intro? Because we didn't do one. We just hit record. <laughs> and I just oh, realized yeah, we that. Do intro. And then, <laughs> did you want to do like uh, um, a quick eternal something? And then I'll yeah. keep it together and um, I'll send it to Scott. I won't have time to upload it today. Mm-hmm. Cause- but I can edit it before we leave and then I'll just email it to Scott or yeah. you. I can try to upload it, but I can. Um, he gave I me don't... access to YouTube, but I don't know if I have access to YouTube on my laptop. I would have to figure yeah. that out. Or I, I can send it to you and he might give you access. Oh, yeah. 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 I can upload it. Yeah. yeah. I know if I have, have to... on my computer. So at home, yeah, but that it... doesn't help me now. Yeah. <laughs> it's always something. <laughs> Um, if you have to, um, because I know I, I, I like had weird background there for a second. Um, I was like throwing things around my room to get ready. You have to crop me out. <laughs> no, you'll be, while, um, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. People aren't so, going to be looking at us this interview anyway. They oh, always yeah. look at oh, the yeah. people. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, all right, so let's do the intro real quick, and then I'll let you introduce him, and then and then we'll do Eternals after that. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Ready. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview. We had an absolute blast talking with him, and I'm sure you guys had an absolute blast watching. But we need to get into something. We just switched total gears here. Mm -hmm. DC to Marvel, Eternals. Eternals is out. It's the first rotten Marvel movie on Rotten Tomatoes, and I think they're wrong. I gave it a fresh. Don't blame me for it. Don't don't blame me. I gave it a fresh. But you guys... There's so much I'm excited to talk with Joe about uh, with Eternals. This is going to be spoilers. If you have not yet seen mm-hmm. Eternals, come back later, right? Where have Just you bookmark been? this. Come back later. Also, where have you been? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's been out for a little while now. I've seen it twice. So you guys are yeah. behind. Same here. But there's so much that was similar yet different in the comics that I want to talk about with you, Joe. So yes. um Wanted to know. Yeah. Yes. So the main thing that is crazy that they changed here. First of all, they did some gender swapping, which whatever it is, what it is. It doesn't bother me at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Like Makari is a guy. Sprite is a guy. um, And Ajax is a guy in the comics. But who cares? It it, it doesn't really change anything. It was that's the problem. Right. So that's why they changed it. I can't see why they changed it. That's a lot of dudes, y'all. It was only Cersei and Thena that were females. Ew. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad they I'm glad they put more women in because I can't imagine yeah, I can't imagine seeing Sprite as a boy. Yeah. A pubescent boy, Sprite. Yeah, he's a boy. So one thing I thought was kind wow. of cool that they did nod in in the movie. If you've seen the movie, which hopefully you have, because we're gonna talk spoilers here, uh, they say that Sprite is like Tinkerbell. Because Sprite is a girl. Now, mm-hmm. in the comics, in the Neil Gaiman run specifically, they say that Sprite was the real Peter Pan. Sprite is actually Peter Pan. So I thought that was kind of a fun connection that they made. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was great. They're like, oh, Tinkerbell. But like in the comics, it's like, yeah, Sprite is Peter Pan, the boy who can't grow up, right? And mm-hmm. it's the same sort of thing that Sprite has this issue with, I can't grow up and I want to grow up, which I mm-hmm. love 
Sprite's character arc in this. Um, I think it's very relatable. If you are stuck as a child in a child's body, but you are older and there are all these things that Sprite can't do, like drink alcohol, which they point out, have mm -hmm. relationships with people, which is also pointed out in the comics. Um, Sprite likes Cersei. Cersei hooks up with like all the Eternals except, except for Sprite. And Sprite's like, Cersei, like you hooked up with everyone but me. And she's like, you're like a kid. I can't do that. Right. So poor Sprite just wants to be human in the Neil mm -hmm. Gaiman run. Sprite is actually the cause of a lot of chaos in the Neil Gaiman run, Joe. Like, listen, I can see it. Sprite makes all the Eternals forget their Eternals. They just start living human wow. lives, uses his, his illusions to do that, and even turns himself human wow. because of it. So wow. it's crazy. But see, I really did like that we got Sprite becoming human. At the end of this movie, Cersei uses the leftover power from the Celestial to do that. Again, that felt very like, we're going to get to the same result as the comic. We're just going to take a way different route to get there, right? Uh, yeah, I thought they're sending her. I love that they're sending her to boarding school. <laughs> I know. It's like after I get out of school, she's on her phone. It's like yeah. you're immediately a teenager. Like it was like instantly you're a human teenager. It was hilarious to me. Mm -hmm. um, did you like Sprite in the movie? No, I thought Sprite was oh. annoying. Um, <laughs> no, you didn't even no, think about no, it. I like, I like the way Sprite, Sprite was played, but as a character, I kept feeling yeah. like, Sprite, you're getting in the way, especially when the fangirling part came and it's like, oh my God, come on, stop fangirling over him, over Icarus. He's, mm -hmm. Yes, you have a crush on him, but you don't have to like break the whole world helping him. Right. Out. But oh, think yeah. about teenage girls. Is that not yeah, something? That's true. It's very fitting. <laughs> And that's why I, I that's why I didn't like it because I'm just like I mean having raised teenage girl that's a that's a that's a period in life that I'm just that most parents would like to forget because they're just that's something and that's coming up on me I got an eight and ten year old girl so yay yeah and but it I have feels like a teenage yeah, myself, girl yeah. mm -hmm. a teenage girl would literally be like okay like oh my I god break the world let me, to let me be with my love. Says. Yeah, exactly. He yeah. smiled at me. Let me go do what he says. <laughs> and it's like, exactly. Sorry, he will never be with you. It will never happen. Never. <laughs> uh, another Who's one of my favorite one? characters, though, is I, and a lot of people I don't think like this character just from looking on social media, but I love Druig. I think Barry Keoghan plays plays Druig very well. Um, Druig's a little different in the comics. He likes to create war basically he likes to mess people up by making them see I all see these that. crazy things which in this one he's more of a pacifist right um so it did change his overall character i guess but still played very similar and i liked i like how subtle he is in the movie i mm -hmm. guess is, is mm -hmm. my way of saying it. i thought he was great i thought he was a lot he's i just love barry and then real quick side note there's rumors that because he's in the batman there's rumors he might be joker or mad hatter so but okay, i can see I can him see as that. joker yeah, mm -hmm. I love. I, I I mean, we've had enough people as Joker. I want. I want to see the Hatter. Let's <laughs> and do that's that. What everybody Let's, says. Everybody's like, "Have we had enough?" Joker. We've had enough. There's so many Gotham. There are so many Gotham villains that are so amazing. Let's just do another one. Let's do something yeah. fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. Let, let him do the Hatter. Um, the Hatter. I don't think we've seen the Hatter in, in a live action movie yet, have we? I don't think so. Oh, I don't, have to look I at don't it. know. I'll have to look I it don't up. Think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, that was a complete side note. But I really liked him. Yeah. I thought Angelina Jolie was great. I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh my gosh, yeah." Uh, well, I've seen a lot of people say they felt like she was underused, and you have Angelina Jolie. And here's mm. the thing: you have mm -hmm. ten lead characters. Mm -hmm. You have to give everyone their moment, or the whole story is going to fall apart. I think they wanted to see her get as much screen time as, as Jim and Chan did as Cersei. But see, I appreciated the fact that she. Brought, uh, I, I don't think anybody but a dramatic actor like her could have brought the arc Athena to mm -hmm. the screen. You needed somebody that, that, is, that is like really dramatic because you have this superhero who can't be a superhero or it triggers a crazy, you know, ness <laughs> or a, 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 an episode that could kill her friends, you know? Mm -hmm. So she's a superhero who can't be a superhero. How do you mm -hmm. do that? Right. And it's like almost like superhero Alzheimer's or, or dementia. You know that she has, and then when every time she looks at Gilgamesh and sees the scars that he has on him, you can see the hurt in her eyes. She I so loved pretty. those two together. I oh. know. I mean, and well, and it doesn't look like they have a romantic relationship, which I I really appreciate. But if they did, I would I would still go for it. 
Right. Exactly. Um, well, it's yeah. the same with Druig and Makari, right? Like there's little right. nods of like, they like each other, but have they gone there? Right. I mean, right. they showed us Icarus and Cersei just, which I will tell you, I brought my kids. They're eight and 10. I brought them to go see the movie and it was fine. It's, they don't know what they're looking at. Number one, I was like, they're hugging. They're in love. It looks they're like they, yeah, they're hugging. Like, they're hugging really, really long, and but, that's it. <laughs> right. But I'm glad that they that Marvel put that in there because it just I feel like it brought this movie. We've talked about before um, a couple weeks ago about how it's not really your typical Marvel movie. It feels like no. something different, something more. Mm -hmm. It's more. I don't want to use the word mature, but it's more. Sophisticated. You know, sophisticated. Yes, it is. There's mm -hmm. a lot more in this movie than action, humor, which it has action and it has humor. I mean, Kingo is hilarious. Kumal was phenomenal in that role. He's just so funny and so subtly hilarious. hilarious. He's oh my God. so fantastic. Um, but they made it more mature with that. And then, so that was one big Marvel first. And then the other big Marvel first, which I loved, is that you have your first gay superhero like out gay superhero and your first gay kiss on screen which mm -hmm. i thought was phenomenal i love that they did beautiful that. little family i love their family i love everyone it. when they kissed at the premiere everyone cheered which i really really enjoyed yeah I thought that was great and it, it was, was a really happy moment in mine yeah yeah it was just great to see like they're so unafraid to put that out there because and i was talking with someone um i'll give him a shout out black gay Co uh comic geek um he uh was talking about how it's sad that there's this movie is it's literally banned in countries because mm -hmm. of this gay kiss yeah and so he's like I, you know he's like i love being queer and these poor people who are queer are never going to get to see themselves on the screen mm -hmm. they're going to have to hide it i mean sometimes it's still punishable by death in places it is but i still i still like that marvel is like okay we're not doing this we're not going to remove it for you yeah You've got to get with the program. So that Marvel is is putting it on the, I, I think before they've always accommodated mm -hmm. um, Disney, Marvel, even, uh, you know, DC, they've all the studios, they've accommodated by pulling those parts sometimes right. out of those movies. And now I'm glad that Marvel said, no, we're not going to do it. So you deal with your people being pissed off that they can't see it. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's your, it's your problem. And, and I think by putting the ball in the court in, uh, over on the other side, having the country explain okay why they can't see the movie and having these people upset you know time after time um i think that 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 is really it's really good it's finally it's about time it's about time it's, and i think is. that will that will lead us to you know a more a, you know having those uh having these images in those countries i think a lot faster i hope so i do because mm -hmm. it's sad to think about like because mm -hmm. we're lucky over here you know to to there's that freedom of speech is uh, for the most part, <laughs> obviously there's still some issues, but I think there's issues everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it feels like there, it's more out there and, and people are able to see themselves represented on screen, no matter what idiots say about it. It's getting more and more, mm -hmm. I think the last couple of years and it's really starting to get more like, okay, like we're just going to show it. And if you don't like it, that's too bad. Yeah. Deal with it. I, and that's, that's the attitude we need to be having. Um, the world moves on. And I think, oh, uh, going back to the rotten um, uh, that Eternals right. got, I've been listening to a lot. I mean, I would listen to a bunch of critics walking out of my view, my uh, screening. They're kind of like, it was meh. And I'm like, we just watched this in the Dolby studio. So it had <laughs> the stellar sound that was all around you and in the, and the good seats. The good seats of the theater, you know, so and the big, the best screen in this theater. And you said, meh, really? I know. So I'm thinking that people are going in there knowing that there's all this stuff. And I, I don't think they wanted to, to succeed. They're not wanting yeah. to open their minds to it. Um, I, I, the, these same people have the same reaction to anything that's new, yeah. um, diverse. And, and, you know, they're probably the, they're probably the same people that, that talk about, that you know think cancel culture is a thing and probably talk about woke culture culture as well you know i'm mm -hmm. like you you people you're you're, you're kind of stuck back there should not be writing these mainstream uh uh you know criticisms these reviews yeah. let somebody else have it and and you know i say it all the time if you if superhero movies are not your thing why are you there well exactly and and then the worst part is because it's people that act like that but then this movie isn't even really 
a superhero movie. It it's is, not. but it's but it's not. It's mm -hmm. it felt like a love letter to humanity, to be perfectly honest with you. You know, yeah. Cersei is like, I don't care. I'm going to put my foot down and like we are going to take care of humans, like mm -hmm. you know, which I love that. And so it feels like this is so much more like, yes, it's a superhero movie. Yes, there's superheroes. Yes, there's action. Yes, there's superhero fights. But there's so much more to this movie. Yeah. And so it feels like people, you had to go in with an open mind to this. And mm -hmm. if you've already made your mind up, then why are you bothering? Yeah. Yeah. To me, if, if this were comics, this feels like a black label or, yeah. you know, something yeah. that, you know, an indie image um, version Mm -hmm. um of the licensed characters or something like that you know or some kind of marvel dc crossover or something you know yeah. something that's out of the main the main the, the main course of things uh, it's it's kind of an aside right yeah. also, you know um it's I something agree. they wanted to do they wanted to elevate things and this is what they did i really it's like true. that and yeah i mean if, it's it's, if this is not too. your thing then you can just go ahead and just um this is not just your don't thing watch it. don't watch it don't watch it don't watch I don't it. Know. You don't have to watch everything. And yeah, because we need to have nice things like this. I mean, um, we need this movie out. I think we, mm -hmm. I, um, and so I'm, uh, I'm not doing the review for my site, the black Cape. I'm letting, um, we have, um, an Indian, my Indian, um, is he Indian? Oh, he lives in Dubai, but he's Indian. And he's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he has like, and I said, it, it, it has so much lore from the Middle Eastern lore. So I wanted mm -hmm. him to kind of look at it and give his opinion. Perfect. So he's, but they don't get it until like, I think next week or the week after. Um, yeah. They get so, it later than us. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to kind of let you have be the voice of the black cape on the, your review, but I'm writing up a, um, a something that talks about how you have to have, uh, you have to be, have knowledge of the way kind of POC culture does family um, mm -hmm. to kind of get this, um, the way this family is structured. Um, and that's basically anybody, if you grew up with black, with friends that were not white, that's basically, you know what they're talking about. Um, so <laughs> like, um, but I, I said it expands, it expands uh, the ideas that we have and the possibilities because before now it's either, you know, you either go with Iron Man or you go with Cap. So it's like, or, you know, or you go with this person or this person, it's black or it's white, you know, and they, they're yeah. like, Oh, they always talk about a gray area. But there's always only two options. And I right. think what Cersei did, they they started off with only two options. But she's like, no, we can come together yeah. and put, our, put all of our challenges together and come up with something else and yeah. having a third option. And I, I I talk about how, you know, cultures, uh, you know, they've had to, even in their country sometimes, when there's a ruling class, you have to come up with a third option because you have to survive. Right. You know? Well, and Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, it's like, I've seen a lot of complaints being, well, how come Kingo left and wasn't part of the final fight? Like, did Kumal have scheduling conflicts? And I'm thinking, listen, this is, this feels like it was put there on purpose. Because mm -hmm. you have the people who are like, I back Cersei, right? Mm -hmm. That's, you have that group. Then you have Sprite, who's like, I'm going to back Icarus for whatever mm -hmm. reasons. Maybe not the best reasons. Maybe just because mm -hmm. she's crushed on him. But um, I'm going to back. <laughs> it was. But I'm going to back Icarus no matter what. I will fight my friends. I don't care. But then mm -hmm. you have Kingo, who is like, I love you all. I don't think you're going to do. I don't think this is the right thing. I don't want to be part of this fight. But like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to fight my friends over it. It's not worth killing mm -hmm. my friends. It's not worth yeah. hurting my friends. So I'm just going to back out let you guys do your thing. Mm -hmm. I thought that was beautiful. I thought it was important to have that yes. moment also. Like it made sense for at least one of eight people who are left or seven people to be like, oh, I'm not going to be a part of this conflict. But like, I believe this person, but it's not worth fighting you all for it. Mm -hmm. That felt natural because of course there's not going to be, like you said, just a black and a white, right? Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. also a, in the middle, like, well, I believe it, but I'm not going to hurt my friends over it. Right. Right. I thought that was beautiful and very, it felt to me like it was on purpose included in the movie. And I hope so, because that means now when we get to a point where the Avengers are stuck between a rock and a hard place, they're not going to go with this option, you know, oh, everybody dies um, <laughs> or, 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 you know, we die. It's going to be like, okay, yeah, surely there's something else. And they're right. going to actually look for something else, you know? I know. Um, <laughs> I know. Oh, can we talk I, about... Yeah. How I was just gonna say, can we talk about how gorgeous those celestials are? Like 
they did such oh. a good job of showing how massively rising out of are. Yeah, rising out of the ocean oh, the gosh. slow rise out of the ocean just i mean they were just beautiful mm -hmm. coming up out of the ocean i mean like I mean, even when you realize, recognize that this rock is really a hand and that one, that, that rock is a head, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a body coming out, <laughs> it's still, it was still beautiful. And actually, was. all of it was beautiful. Like when we saw Babylon, yes. and you know, usually when you have like these movies where they're, they're situated in the desert, it's all brown and shades of brown. <laughs> and yes, you're right. Okay, so this one. Babylon was blue and gold and yellow. And like even um in, in the other desert scenes, you you had greenery because there is greenery in the desert. There is. Right. You had yeah. greenery. You had people wearing colors. And I liked that I loved that there were so so much color incorporated in all the desert scenes, in all the scenes, mm -hmm. in all the scenes, even in, in the yeah. city. The city, yeah. um, the, that night fight that at the at the beginning, all the mm -hmm. lights. I mean, the lights light up, you know, and they, they kind of, they form like a really good backdrop for um, the, the deviant and, and, yeah. and everything. So I think Chloe's out, you know, with Nomadland and even her first film, the, the, the views were amazing. Yes. And, stunning. and I feel, and I think this, this is, again, we go back to why this film is different. I think you had to have someone who can, you know, kind of portray the setting like that because you had to, have something extra to show this is different. And I mm -hmm. think that actually helped having having the, the 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 way it's beautifully shot, the way she shot the celestials coming out of the or I mean that was it was just amazing. I know. You had to have somebody who what wasn't who's fresh yeah. and and thinks differently to do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then speaking of of uh the deviants you brought up real quick um I want to mention that in the comics it's quite different. The deviants are more like in here, they felt more animalistic, right? They're more mm -hmm. like kind of like animals, except for crow as crow evolves. And the basically in the uh, comics, they're more of like another human race, but lower because it's like deviants and then humans and then Eternals are the gods, right? But they're mm -hmm. still like they walk and talk and they're not like animals that just make sounds. And something that's very interesting that I kind of thought they were going to do in the movie just because of what we saw in the trailers, but they never got there. And I'm okay with it. I am. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that Thena actually uh, falls in love with Crow, a deviant, and they have children in the comics. Um, so I thought maybe, you know, in the trailer we saw when he's kind of holding her, when he tries to kill her, tries to suck her stuff, and then she kills him, which I love that scene, by the way. You see it in the trailer and you don't know what it is. I kind of thought, oh, are they about to kiss? Like, is that, are they going to be together in the movie? And they didn't do that, which I'm fine with. Um but I find it interesting that, uh, you know, those who read the comics know, like, Thena is, like, in love with, like, they always say, you have an, you know, you have an obsession with the Deviants, and you love the Deviants, and she's, because she does, loves the bad she boys. Yeah, she, yeah, she tried to hide it for a while, and then, like, they have twins, I think they're twins, they have two kids. Wow. So it's just, it's very interesting, the changes that they make, but. Thena loves the bad boys, I love so it. I did I like it. that she's the one who killed him, because that felt like they were making that, some kind of connection to them. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not the same as the comics. And then I do got to get going. But real quick, let's talk about the uh, end credit scenes. Like, Harry Styles is in the freaking MCU. <laughs> like, what? And then, um, what? I, okay, so <laughs> explain the, his dude to me. Okay. Because okay. Well, I, don't all, think I, was... I don't think he's the right person from who I think it is. But so you explained who he's supposed okay. to be. Okay. So... Let's start with Pip the Troll real quick. Was super excited to see him. I think Pat Oswalt mm -hmm. is the perfect voice for him. That's absolutely perfection. Um, I thought when there was a second shimmer, I thought 100%. I was like, this is going to be Adam Warlock. I'm in. I thought they had so just too. announced who Adam Warlock was going to be. Adam Warlock and um, Pip have a connection. But then at the mm -hmm. same time, you think it doesn't make sense because we haven't seen Adam Warlock's story yet, which is what we're going to get nope. in Guardians 3. So, of course, they can't just bring him in without a background, even though I really wanted to be. So then when they said Thanos' brother, I'm like, oh, it's Eros. It's going to be Star Fox. He's very cool. So he has similar-ish powers uh, to Druig in a way. I mean, he can basically manipulate your emotions to make you love someone, hate someone. Like, he, can, he manipulates your emotions, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Make you become obsessed with something or, or whatever. Now, there is a character or a story arc it was very interesting 
um, where Thanos says, because they're brothers, you know, Thanos says that Eros used his powers on him when he was younger to make him obsessed with death. And that is why he wanted to destroy half the universe. Eros feels so bad about this that he has his, their father like turn off. And, and it's like a whole council, I think, actually turn off his powers, which I guess you can do. I don't know. That's crazy because mm. you shouldn't be able to do that. But whatever. Right. Uh, <laughs> just turn off his powers because he doesn't want to hurt more people, mm -hmm. which is interesting. It's a good I like that about him, right? Like he was like, oh, did I accidentally do this? Come to find out Thanos is lying, shocker. And mm -hmm. Eros didn't do that when he was younger. It was just something, a seed he planted and made him think that. And But I'm, it's upon seeing it the second time, I was like, okay, I think I can get behind Harry Styles in this casting. It's weird. Okay. But I think I can get behind it. I, I, He's supposed to be, I'm intrigued. Yeah. He's supposed to be the cool brother, right? He's cool. He's definitely the cool he's, one. He's a cool brother. And he's okay. very like, he's a womanizer, you know, he's like, yeah, he makes women know. like fall in love with him by just yeah. like, he has that so swagger. feels yeah. very Harry Styles to me. He has, it, he has <laughs> that swagger about him. Okay. Yes, so what exactly. about the second one? Um, so okay. Jon Snow is like, you know, <laughs> I love that he's with, I love, I, I, I'm sorry. I could not think of him as anything else. I know <laughs> the man has done several other things. I know I've seen it. Right. Uh, to me, he's, he's John Snow. Yeah. So I'm like, he John Snow. You know nothing. He knows Snow. nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> he's totally oblivious. Um, so what was his, what was with his scene? Okay. So he opens up the sword. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, even kind of mentioned is that at one point earlier, uh, when they first go back to the ship and they're finding Makari there and they say, are you, uh, or they're playing with a sword and they say, is that the ebony blade? And they say, no, mm -hmm. it's Excalibur. Yes. So the ebony blade Mm -hmm. in, in this lore and in Marvel uh, was created by Merlin as kind mm -hmm. of a matching rival sword to Excalibur. So there's the Ebony mm -hmm. Blade and Excalibur. Ebony Ooh. Blade will drive the person who uses it insane over time mm -hmm. before they use it. And you can see when he reached out to almost touch it, it kind of was like going towards his hand. Like Yeah, and he didn't want to do it, yeah. And he wasn't sure because, mm -hmm. and I think it says death is my reward or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you... Odds are you're going to go nuts. Now, Dane in the comics is able to hold it off for quite a while. Uh, he's able to get through some stuff, which is great. Whether they'll do that or not, I don't know. But he becomes the Black Knight who wields <gasps> the Ebony Blade. Okay? Oh, yeah. okay. I've heard of this guy. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. So that's who Dane is. So that's when he says, my family has quite a complicated history. And he's about to tell her, like, yeah, his family is like goes all the way back to the times of Merlin. And has been in charge of this blade, which he now has in his hands. Now, then you hear that voice. Are you sure you're ready for this? First watch, I thought it was the watcher. I thought mm -hmm. it was Jeffrey Wright. It was very hard to hear in the premiere because everybody was screaming and cheering anyway, which is how premieres are. Uh, and I thought, oh, it's the watcher. This is crazy. Jeffrey Wright was at the premiere, so which it makes sense because he's a part of Marvel. But I was still like, it mm -hmm. has to be him, right? Mm -hmm. Someone said, I think that's Blade to me <gasps> and upon really? the second watch listening in and i never pronounce his name right i don't even want to say it because i'm not going to say it right you know i can never say it right i can never say it right but he's already cast as blade and uh i listened and i was like oh i think it is him and so i think this is bringing blade in so blade is going to be in the black knight stories i think so like and maybe it's just people getting in my head saying they think that's him. And then when you uh -huh. rehear, listen, you hear it. But I uh -huh. think so. Wow. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. so that would be very interesting. Okay. Um, there's a lot going on here. It's a lot. They. I like that we got two important end credits. Because usually one is like a silly, you know, like mm -hmm. a hand and the drums, right? Like it's a silly, like, mm -hmm. okay, sure, whatever. And it's got nothing to do with anything, but it's fun. This is like two major, major reveals, credits, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. On that note, guys. We got to go. No, I got a flight to yeah. catch. Yeah, you but, do. Uh, as you can tell, I'm here in Hawaii. This isn't my normal background, but now I'm leaving Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So mm, I'm sad. But it was a fun vacation. Uh, it was great to catch because. up with you. And yes. uh, of course, we had a lovely guest on today. Yes. So, well, guys, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let us all let us know all your thoughts down below in the comments about everything we talked about. Make sure you subscribe and hit mm -hmm. the notification bell so you know when we are live because uh, we're not the only show on this channel. No, we we're not.
she's like, I don't have my computer open. Yeah, so. I don't have my computer. Um, <laughs> training in Hollywood. Oh, training in Hollywood is tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll come back. They've got some great stuff that they're usually doing. Um, they they've usually got something good for fan casting. Somebody. Yeah. Um, and they've also, they, they've, they've had some really, really, a string of really, really great interviews. Yeah. So, so you know, come back and watch the, 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 the girls that are, they're really, um, Kristen and Yael, they're really, really, you know, kind of really tearing it up over there. Yeah. They are. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you guys can find me everywhere. I'm Tessa Smith. You can find me everywhere. Mama's Geeky at mamasgeeky.com as well. Thank you. And I'm Jonita Davis. You can find me at Jonita L. Davis on all socials and at the Black Cape. Bye guys. Yeah. Bye.